There's four key concepts here that you must take on board. In this system, in any way that we play golf, see, I'm giving you the basics here of how to play golf in general. It's very basic, very bare bones, and you will discover more stuff as you go. But there's always some key concepts that every, even the greatest players will follow. You have to work back from the green. We work back from the green. We don't stand on the tee and just blast. We need a plan of attack working back from the green. You may not understand this now, but I will explain it to you in further detail after this. Get it on the green. This is key concept. This should be your mantra on every single shot after your tee shot. Get it on the green. We want to get it on the green in as few shots as possible and get it on the green, not fluff it into the bunker by being cute. Not trying to get it right next to a pin when we just need to hit the green. Our goal is to get it on the green by working back from the green. We want to, we want to leave ourselves the shot that gets us on the green. We want to hit a shot that gets us on the green. Always be thinking on chip shots, everything. Get it on the green. Two putt maximum. This is so key to any golf. It doesn't matter if you're trying to break par, you're trying to break par, trying to break 80, 90, 100. You have to be two putting. Anytime you're averaging more than 36 putts around, that is trouble. We need to reduce that to maximum of two putts per hole. And there are ways to do that by just practicing. But if you are practicing hard and you're still not getting it, you need a lesson from a professional to help you with green reading, if that's your issue, or to help you with the stroke, because that can also be an issue with bad fundamentals. Mindset shift. This is the most key because working back from the green is a new concept. Get your thinking, get it on the green regardless of where it finishes is a new concept. A two putt maximum is a new concept to your brain perhaps. And the mindset shift of playing this way with fewer clubs and less distance is a mega mind shift, mindset shift that you have to make because you're used to watching golf and, and thinking golf is played a certain way. That is just because there's been no exposure to a new idea like this and your mind will not be used to it. So you will have to shift your mental game to a way that goes, I accept that this is what I'm going to do for a while. And I accept that it's not going to be like what they show on TV. And once you can accept that, good job. Here we go. What do we mean when we say work back from the green? Work back from the green. What I mean by that is, what is your favorite shot into the green? That is very key because if you like to hit a certain distance with a certain club, that's where you have to get the ball to in order to attack the green with more confidence. Regardless of what people say about logically, because there's no logic in golf. Logic in golf, as you'll discover the more you play, is reversed. There's a lot of things that you think logically should work in golf, but they do not. The opposite actually works. So, a lot of people will say logically a golfer should be hitting it closer to the green to stand a better chance. Unfortunately, these people have lost touch with reality because people who are shooting above 100, as you may know yourself, those shots inside 60 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards, 80 yards, there's a, there's a bit of a, a boogeyman um, distance where you may be very uncomfortable and you just chunk it and you blade it and you hurt you don't enjoy a certain distance close to the hole but there may be a club in your bag that you enjoy hitting from a certain distance from the pin now you need to know what that is for me i mean i play off a 4.4 index okay so for me my favorite is a lob wedge from like 85 from 60 i like a pitching wedge from 130 i like to hit a 50 degree from 120 and I like to hit a sandwich from about 107. Those are my favorite distances. What are your favorite distances? Because that's where we want to approach the green from. So that's why I picked the pitching wedge and the sandwich because a lot of times that's people's favorite club to approach the green with. If yours is 150 yards, that's a bonus because we have the 150 club, we have the pitching and we have the sand. We want to get the ball to that position as often as we can to hit it onto the green with confidence. Confidence is key in golf. If you have a confident shot, it's going to make you feel better standing over it to hit the green. And if you don't hit the green, you're going to be in the right proximity to the green around the edges because you have a confident club. That's what I mean working back from the green. Every hole, that's what you should be thinking. You do not want to get yourself into positions where you do not feel comfortable. 
Where you don't feel comfortable is where you're going to hit bad shots. Where you feel comfortable is where you're going to have the confidence and the, the planning and control of your actions is going to translate to more confidence and more enjoyment. Hitting and hoping is not, not golf. This is playing the golf course. It's not the golf course playing you. That's the big difference, is that you play. You determine to the golf course what you are going to do. So let's say your favorite shot into this hole may be, or to any hole, may be a 100-yard pitching wedge. This hole is 360 yards. 360 yards, it's generally a par 4 for the professional level, but because it's stroke index 11 and we're adding to the par, we make a new par of par 5. That means to hit this green in regulation, you have to hit 5 minus 2, that means 3 shots. Can you cover 360 yards in 3 shots? Of course you can. Of course you can. So you hit your club off the tee. Once you've hit your club off the tee, which is your comfortable club, either the 150 club that you selected, or if you are one of the lucky people who can hit it 175 plus, you hit your 175 plus club off the tee. Now from there, we need to know the distance to the hole. Once we know that distance, okay, with a rangefinder or a GPS watch, you can then split your shot up into what you need to do to get it to your comfortable distance. Now your comfortable distance may be 100 yards, it may be a 20 yard chip, it may be anything inside 50 yards. It's completely a personal game. The system is not, is not cookie cutter. It's up to you. So you have to find out a way of getting the ball from wherever it finishes in the fairway to your comfortable position. So let's say we've hit this 150 yards. We now have 210 yards in. Okay, we've hit it 150. We now have 210 yards. We know that our favorite club is a 100 yard pitching wedge. So what do we do? We just hit a pitching wedge. We go 150 yard club. We go pitching wedge. And we go pitching wedge. So it goes 150, 100, 100. And we're on or around the green. We've hit the green in three shots. We two putt. We make a five. That's the basic premise of the system. It's working back from the, the green. We want to understand what is our favorite shot into the green. We want to set up that shot as often as we can with our new regulation shot. So if this was a par four stroke index two, it would change to par six, right? And it's 360 yards, but now it's not three shot regulation, it's now four shot regulation. So you're, in, you're really in the pound seat now. Now you're hitting your 150 club, you're hitting your 100 club, you're hitting your 100 club, and you're on or around the green in three shots, giving you the chance for the chip and the putt. Okay, we'll talk about practice later so to ensure a better score as well. But this is basically what you're doing. You're basically taking your basic clubs and hitting the most basic stress-free shots to leave yourself a stress-free approach shot into the green. This is the basis of golf. These shots will carry you forward for the rest of your life and you'll always lean on them because you will have practiced them so much. So that's a par 4 which changes to a par 5 or a par 6 but it doesn't matter on what the par of the hole is. It always comes down to just trying to get the ball into a place that you want to get the ball. So we can, we can turn it around and we can say look it's a 360 yard hole. We have to hit it in three shots because it's actually a par 5 and we hit the 150 and we hit the 150 again. Now that's for people who want to hit a 60 yard shot into the green. Let's say you like to hit a 150 yard shot into the green. Then you can hit a 150 yard shot off the tee and you can hit a sand wedge and your 150 yard shot into the green. It's about managing the distances you would like to hit. That's basic course management. Because by using these shorter clubs you can't reach hazards off the tee. By using these shorter clubs off the tee and in the fairways you give yourself a chance at hitting it into wide parts of the fairway with less danger by staying short of hazards. By doing this, you allow yourself the control to set up shots that you want to set up. This is the big difference between blasting and guessing. Blasting and hitting the three wood or the three iron because you have such a long distance into the hole. This is the mindset shift that you need. You are never going to be pummeling a golf ball. If you ever hit a golf ball too hard, 
you're doing it wrong because these, these distances and, and clubs I've chosen are not designed for you to smash. It's for you to manage the golf course, learn to control your decisions, learn to control the golf course and your behavior on the golf course rather than letting the golf course dictate to you and make you frustrated. If you're hitting it too hard, you're doing it wrong. You're, never, you're not going to be going for the green from 210 yards just yet. You will in future, but from for now, if you're hitting a club too hard to lay up to another club to hit into the green, it's pointless. It's smooth swinging all the way, stress free. Let's look at a par five quick plays. 460 yard hole, old par, par five, because the stroke index is six, it's below nine. We add two shots to the par, it's now a par seven. Can you, sir, carry 460 yards in five shots? Why do I say five shots? Because par seven minus two putts is five shots. Your regulation is five shots. Can you do 460 yards in five shots? Of course you can. Of course you can. Don't want to hear any nonsense about people saying they can't. Because 460 yards divided by five, I mean, it's a very simple math equation. It's like 92 yards. 92 yards? You can literally hit five pitching wedges there. Five pitching wedges. Now, are we necessarily going to hit five pitching wedges? Hell no. But you could if you wanted to. That's the point. That's the mindset shift that you need. Is that, hang on, if I can do this hole in five pitching wedges, two putt and leave with a par seven and that goes toward breaking a hundred, what am, why, why am I trying to hit something so long to try hit the green in two when I'm never going to? Because we are not hitting the par five in two. You are not hitting this in two. The one out of 50 times you may do it does not count toward anything because the other 49 times are disaster. So all we do is we take that club that goes 150, okay, 150, we hit another one that goes 150, I don't know if you noticed, but because the ball's only going 150, you can't reach these deadly hazards off the tee. You are not spraying the ball out all over the place like with the driver. You are remaining in play. Remaining in play under control of your decisions and your emotions. Huge. Huge in, in having more fun at golf. So we've now covered 300 yards in two shots. Let's say we don't hit it perfectly, okay? Let's say we hit a shuri and this one goes 130. We've now carried about, we've now covered approximately 280 yards. We now have 180 yards left. It's a par seven. We need to get there in five shots. We're already way more than halfway. So you've gone 280 yards. Now we have to decide what shot do you prefer into the green? Do you prefer a 100 yard shot or do you prefer 80 yard shot? Pitching wedge versus sandwich. Do you understand what I'm saying here? It's, it's very simple when it comes down to this because you have a limited number of clubs. You have to manage your game to hit those clubs to be able to score and have fun. Instead of trying to be 180 yards out and taking out the, the three wood that takes that goes once out of 10 great, two out of 10 great, five out of 10 catastrophe and three out of 10 mediocre. Okay, where your average score for those 10 shots would be like triple bogey or something like that. So we have 180 yards. We don't have the big stick in the bag. We now have a choice. Do we want 80 into the green or do we want 100 into the green? Whichever you prefer, set it up. So if we want 80 yards in, we hit the pitching wedge. That leaves us 80. If we want 100 yards in, we hit the sand wedge. That goes 80 yards, it leaves us 100 into the hole. Do you understand how this works? Whatever you have left, you want to work back from the green and set yourself up there. You want to be there for your easy approach to the green. If we do that, let's say we go with a 100-yard 100, 100 option. We're now here, and we have an 80-yard shot onto the green. That would mean 150-yard shot, 130-yard shot with a miss strike, a 100-yard pitching wedge, and then an 80 yard shot onto the green. If we hit that green in four shots, we are one ahead of the game because we only have to hit it in five shots. If we miss the green and we chip and we only two putt, we don't get up and down, we still walk off with a seven. 
But if we do get on the green and two putt for a six, that's a birdie, players. That's a birdie. That's not a six. That's not a bogey on a par five. That's a birdie on your par seven. That is the mindset shift you need because can you cover these distances? Look at your scorecard that you have from your course. Work out the new par to be a par 99 golf course and then divide and then work out the number of shots you need for regulation. Your new par minus two putts equals number of shots need for regulation. Then look at the distances on the card and go, hang on, can I cover 350 yards in three shots, in four shots? Of course you can. That's the mindset shift you need to take the pressure away from you of having to hit two shots onto a long hole. Just chill, players. Easy life, easy life. New system, new mindset. Let's carry on with a par three example, okay? These are examples I'm putting up here to show you how your mind can start changing. It's very powerful stuff. So we have 175 yard par three. This is all water, okay? This is actually a hole in uh, Port Elizabeth, South Africa. It's pretty similar to this. There may be a bunker here, I don't know, something like that. But it's a, it's a, it's a tough hole. The wind is blowing off the left. You know, most people are going at the, at the green of high handicaps and they're ending up in the water. It's a disaster to watch. I've seen people put four or five balls in the water because they have not realized this concept yet. This very powerful golf sidekick PSP 150 asterisk system. Now, I've played this, okay? Link in the description to my other left-handed videos. I've played this hole left-handed on my second ever nine holes as a left-hander where I broke 50 for nine holes. That's how quick it took by following the system. I cannot hit a ball 175 yards as a left-hander because I'm like a beginner. But there's a lot of land here. This is, shouldn't be a border. This is just all grass here. This is all grass there. Now, a par 3, stroke index 7. Remember, stroke index under 9, we're adding 2 to the scorecard par. So this actually becomes, players, this becomes... A par 5. How sick is that? 175 yard par 5, girlfriends and boyfriends. Now, boyfriend, if you're going to try hit a 175 yard par 3, well, X par 3, you are screwed. I can guarantee that anyone shooting over 100 going for this green, we're taking minimum 6 here. Minimum. But watch that video, watch me play this hole and see how I do. I do make double bogey, which is a par 5, which is the par 5. So it's par for me, with a great chance of actually making the four. So because it's a par five, we have to hit this green in three shots. Okay, of course, it's very short, so we can actually go for this one in two under regulation. Instead of going at it all the way, which is tough, look at this here. I'll see if I can find the footage of how I showed Brian this from Canada at one hole we played at Gassan. Uh, Gassan Legacy, I believe the golf course was. For you, I'm going to take what goes 160? 160, 160. 160 is my 8. Okay, let's go 7 iron. Um, you see that palm tree? You see the palm tree down there? Yeah. Right of that palm tree to the, to the drier looking tree. The one, that's, the one that's in the sun. The bush in the water and the palm tree. Exactly. With a 7. Great shot. Perfect. Now chip up the green and we make a maybe a three or there you go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. See that's why I say go so far left. You see how it turns that's, like that? That is not where I would have played it. Exactly. I would have been way wrong. That's Bermuda man. Perfect. Perfect. Great, now go tap it in. That's a four ski. Instead of going all the way there, because it's a par five hole, par five hole, you only have to hit it in three shots, but uh, really great if we can hit it in two. You don't go there, you go here. Is it flash? Is it going to get the applause from everybody? No. But when you're playing in a competition or you're playing against someone else and you taking the, the amount of shots you need to do and they're going for hero shots, you win. 
over here we hit this ball let's say we hit this with our 150 yard club because of the angle we now have something like a 60 or 70 or 80 yard shot are you comfortable with that if you are continue if you're not work back from the green so ignore what I say and go and work out what you want do you want to hit a 50 yarder a 30 yarder what do you want into the green that's going to determine what club you hit and where you hit it if you want to have a hundred yard shot into the green you want to hit it a hundred yards out this way and a hundred yards that way it just changes the angle you need to work it out for yourself instead of going with the hit and hope shot you need to then start calculating from the whole back what am I comfortable with what am I happy with hitting onto the green if you're good with a 40 yard shot if you're good with a bump and run just remember this hole only needs three shots on so don't even put too much pressure on trying to get it on in two shots get it around the green in two shots and then we go for the chip and the putt the chip and the putt we get up and down for a four we walk off with a birdie what a life okay we get a five hmm ooh, doesn't feel nice to make a five but guess what it's now a par five hole it's now a par five hole if you walk off with a five you have done well regardless of what anyone says that is the path to 99